A very warm welcome to today's edition of our learning tutorial. I'm JK of JK Clothing. Today, this is a beautiful style we are going to learn how to do. This is a Victoria corset on this beautiful skirt. And so if you want to learn how to do this, do stick and stay. Let's do this. <music> Before we can proceed, we first would have to draft our basic bodies. This is the front, this is the back. In case you are new to our channel and you'd want to learn how we drafted these, there will be a link in the description box for you to check it out. Alternatively, you can check the top right corner of your screen. There is a clickable link there. You can click it and as well follow how we drafted this in-depth basic bodies. After we are done with this, we would go ahead and modify the front and the back in order to get our Victorian corset. We start with the modification of the front pattern first. The front bodice extended only to the waist. Before we can do this very style, we need to extend it further to the hip. And so we would add 8 inches to the shoulder to waist to get to the shoulder to hip. We will divide our hip measurement into 4 and add 2 inches, which is the same seam allowance we added to the bodice to it. So the hip is 49 inches. 49 inches divided by 4 will give us 12 and a quarter. We will then add our 2 inches to it. We will join the hip plus the seam allowance to the waist using the hip cap. We will divide our nipple to nipple measurement into two and then mark it on the hip line. We connect these two dot lines to this very point we marked right now. So we would move from the shoulder to nipple line upwards by 5 inches. We presume that this 5 inches would cover our client's bust enough as she wants it. At this point, we need to widen this shoulder dart to be equal to the dart we have here, which is 2 inches. We measure this and then we get 1 inch. It means that we need to add half of an inch to both sides in order to get our 2 inches width. Now we connect each of these lines to where the shoulder dart ended. We will connect a line from this point all the way into the armhole. We are to measure 3 inches from the bust point line upwards. After that, we will join this very point all the way to where the 3 and a half met. The 3 and a half, remember, is not always the same. It depends on how deep or shallow the client wants her cleavage to be. Mark a point which is equal to the nipple to nipple measurement divided by 2. In this instance, we had 4 inches. And so we'll measure 4 inches on this line, starting from the nipple to nipple point. Next, we'll would measure one and a half from the second dot line towards the side seam. Next, we're going to draw a line that will touch this point we marked here and this point. And would also touch the hip line and would also extend to meet this very curve that was made towards the armhole. Since we want to snatch the waist a bit more, we will take half of an inch from the waist line. We will draw a line 
from this very portion, it shouldn't extend it from this vast point all the way to this point we marked here, which is the half we marked, and all the way to the hip. Mark one inch from this dart towards the center front. Mark another one inch from the center front here towards the dart on the hip line. Draw a line connecting these two points. Mark a point 6 inches below the waistline at the center front here. This is where the Victorian corset is going to end. At the side seam, measure 3 inches downwards from the waistline. Take off the 2 inches that was added as seam allowance to the whole bodies. We are to now draw a line that is connecting this to the center front 6 inches mark we marked here. Before we can do that, we would first have to fold this dart onto this and this other dart onto it so that our shape will be smoothened. So per experience, there's one thing I've realized. When this dart is placed, and this other dart is also taken away from the Victorian corset, by the time you are done stitching, you'd realize that there is a bit of space under the center front area. And so to eliminate that, we would have to widen the dart intervals of both the first and the second dart. And so we are going to widen them by quarter of an inch on each of the sides. We will then connect this new extended dart interval widening to the waist dart. Now, we are going to fold the dart using the new dart lines we have created. After this is done, our initial drawing is done, and so we need to refine it again, starting from the 6 inches and then ending at the 2 inches that we took off as seam allowance. We can go ahead and cut the front pattern out. So we need to label this. This is one, two, three, and four. For each of them, you would have to indicate where the arrow is heading towards. These are the ones we are going to make use of. With the front done, we would go ahead and modify the back as well. Extend the center back line downwards. We will extend the shoulder to waist line downwards by 8 inches, just as we did for the front pattern. We will divide the hip measurement into 4 and then we will add our 2 inch seam allowance, just as we had added to the rest of the bodies. Measure the distance from the center back to this that point and repeat the same measurement on the hip line. Connect these two dart intervals to the dart points you have at the hip line. As we did for the front. We would measure 3 inches at the side seam downwards 
and mark the point. So we take off the two inches. We are going to extend the back waist by two inches. This is to make way for the nip to waist measurement. We will measure the distance between the dart point and this very point. That is the bust divided by four. We divide it to find the midpoint. We will do same for the waist, making sure we do not include the seam allowance. Then we'll draw a line connecting that point to this point and all the way to the hip line. So we'll mark half of an inch from this point towards the side seam. We are to draw a line starting from this point here all the way to the half inch that extension we did to the hip line. We are to cut this line, fold this dart onto the other, and this onto the other. Then we connect this very point to the center back point extension we did here. Now, we would label this as five, this as six, and this as seven. We cannot cut this out and continue. Because we would be lacing the back, we need to take off a few inches from the back. It depends on how wide or close you want it to be. We want this very dress to have just about one inch space at the back. For that, we'll take half of an inch from here and there and take it off. This is the back and this is the front. We're going to use this same pattern to cut out our violin. That is our stiff or stay or gum stay as others may call it. We are going to add seam allowances as we are using it to cut the violin. And so when you look at number one, this is the center front and so this part of the violin is on fold but the rest, each of them are two pieces each and so this would just be one each after it has been opened. I've added the seam allowance on this side. For number two, the seam allowance is added on both sides, both the front and the back here. When it goes to number three, the same. Seam allowance is added here and there. But then with the number four, seam allowance is added at where it will be joining number three. Because on the side, remember we had added two inches seam allowance to it. And so we wouldn't add any allowance thereof. On the top and down here too, there are no allowances added. When we come to the back, number five also will join number four on the side seam. And so at its side, there is no seam allowance. But then, there is seam allowance on the other side. Number six has seam allowance on both the left and the right sides. When it comes to number seven, where the center back line is, there is no allowance added. But then, at the other side, where it will be joining number six, we've added our seam allowance. My seam allowance is quarter of an inch, and so that is what I have added. If yours is half, you can still go ahead and add that. Before we continue, if you are new to this channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Please, let's hear your comments, share, recommend this page to other colleagues so that they also benefit from this educative content. Thank you very much. We will now go ahead and then cut our pieces.
after cutting the violin and putting our seam allowances on them what you are going to do is that the labeling as we have labeled the brown papers we will do same for the violin so that it becomes easier to identify them with this done we will go ahead and use the violin to interface our lining so after we have fused our interface with the lining we would use the same measurement to cut the cell which is the fabric we are using and so we have repeated same for all the parts and so right now we are going to stitch them together we pick number one for instance and then we attach number two to it with this we pick number three we attach it to number two we attach the other side to number two and so we're going to repeat this till we are done from number one to four and five to seven for both the lining which has been fused with the interface and the self after stitching all the pieces together we are going to create notches especially as where there are caps in the stitches and so we create all these notches and then we press open the various seams we'll do that for the lining that is the front lining and then the back lining as well after we are done with that we'll go ahead and press open our seams for the cell as well Remember, you do the same thing as you did for the lining. You create notches, especially at where there are contours in your garment. What you're going to do right now would be to fix the bones. These are the bone channels. These very ones, the stitches. And so we're going to bone all these lines, but then we would also include the center front. You'd first have to measure the distance from the first to the last part of the channel that you're going to fix the bone in. Okay, so when we measure the first one, for instance, we get 15 inches. And so we're going to subtract 1 inch from the 15 inches to make it 14 inches and we'll use the 14 inches to cut the bone this is a stitch on bone it's a bit soft we're going to cut two of this which is for the left and the right we'll do same for these for that and for the center front making sure that for each of the measurements we get we will subtract one inch from it so that the bone does not extend to this portion that is the edge when it does that turning it inside out will become very difficult for us after cutting the various bones we are going to stitch them onto the boning channels and so this is it we are going to place this here as you see and then we stitch on both sides making sure that we start the stitching from the top here then it comes to pass onto the bone so it gets to the other side and repeat it it will look more like double stitches on all the channels that you are going to fix the bones we are doing this for the back and for the front as well but for the self we would not we would not attach any boning to it but then we would as well top stitch the two lines on all the channels this is just decorative in case you've not subscribed to our channel please do so let us feed you with educative content thank you very much we go ahead and then stitch the bones to the various channels and then we'll come back to continue after we have stitched our various bones to the various channels what you are left with is to put the two together that is the lining and the self 
we'll pin them all along. That is the top here. We are going to stitch the top part. When it comes to the back pattern too, we are doing the same thing. After we have stitched the lining to the self at the top here, we're going to create notches all around and then we will top stitch the lining only, leaving the self. We are going to flip this to the wrong side where we push all the seams towards the lining so we're going to top stitch the lining excluding the self we repeat same for this and for the front as well so after we are done with the top we will now go ahead and stitch the down part that is the hem part two we are going to stitch the hem area from here to the other side. We'll do the same for this. So now we can flip this inside out. We're also going to create notches at the back hem and then we'll do as we did for the front. We'll flip the seam allowance over and give it a hot press. Instead of bagging it straight away, because we will be attaching our eyelets so that we lace the dress, we are going to stitch the center back here before we flip it inside out. Sew the back and then the front together. We'll just pin it and then as I have marked this, and so we are taking two inches, but because we want to snatch the waist a little bit more, I'm moving two and a quarter at this part, that is where the waist is. And then with the hip, I leave it as such. And so that is how come we get this. We'll go ahead and stitch this and then we'll fix our eyelids and we are done with the top. Before we start with the skirt, we first need to get our measurement. And so the measurement we would need will be that of the waist, the hip, the skirt length, the waist to hip. With this very skirt, the waist measurement is 24, the hip is 40, and the skirt length is 22. Also, the waist to hip is 8 inches. So these are the measurements you would need. The waist measurement we are using now would be 22. That is because the waist as you measured it, you usually want it to be a little smaller than what you actually need. Instead of the 24, the waist is now going to be 22. Then we are going to calculate 10% of the waist measurement and 10% of the hip measurement. That is because we want the fabric which stretches to be able to lie on the skin without wasting much of the fabric. And so when you are dealing with your stretch fabrics like the scubas, the lycras, the jersey fabrics and all that, all the fabrics that stretches, you can calculate either 5% or 10% depending on how tight you want the dress to fit on the body. And so in this very one, we are calculating 10% because we are using this scuba fabric. So 10% of 22, when we are calculating, it would be 22 times 10 over 100. That is 10%, 10 over 100. When we break this down, we will get 2.2. Meaning we are going to subtract 2.2 from the waist measurement of 22 get 19.8 inches. The next thing would be to calculate 10% from 40, which would then be 4.0. You subtract the 4.0 from 
the 40 and you now have 36 and so in this pattern we are going to draft we are going to assume that our hip measurement is 36 and our waist measurement is 19.8 this is what we are going to use and because the fabric stretches we would be able to do this and the, the dress would still fit the client perfectly well we would maintain the vertical measurement which is the waist to the hip and the skirt length without really doing any alterations on those figures first draw a line which is perpendicular to the center front line as a starting line from the starting line we would move 8 inches downwards to indicate our waist to hip and from the starting line we would also move 20 inches to indicate the length because we are taking 2 inches for the waistband this is serving as our waistline this as our hip line and this as our length and so for the waist we have come to know that the waist is 19.8 and so we are going to divide that by 4 which will then give us 4.95 and to 4.95 in inches, we are talking about almost 4 and 7, 7 8. And so we'd mark 4 and 7 8 here, and then we'd add no seam allowance to it. This is all because the fabric stretches. The hip measurement as we had it was 36. That is after we calculated the 10% from it. And so 36 divided by 4 would then give us 9 inches. And so we'd mark 9 inches here. From there, we'd come to the knee part. We are going to take the same measurement we got for the hip. We bring the same thing here and then we'll subtract 2 to 3 inches. And so because this, we want the pencil to be so much, we are going to take 3 inches. If you don't want it to be that much, you can take your 2 inches and you are good to go. And so it's going to be 9 minus 3 inches which will then give us 6 now with this we are going to connect the 3 points we will add our hem allowance to it the hem allowance is 1 inch We can then go ahead and cut. So right now, this is going to serve as our front and our back pattern. The only difference is that with the back pattern, we would add our zip allowance. And for the front, we will put this on fold. So at the back, we are leaving a zip allowance of just about half of an inch. We need to create a notch at where our zip line would be ending. So we are ending 8 inches below the waist line. And so with this, we are going to attach the sides. That is the side seams. Because we did not add any seam allowance to, to this shape, we are going to sew just cut off an inch on both sides. After that, we would run overlock stitches on the edges as well. So when we are stitching knit fabrics, or stretchy fabrics this is what you do you need to hold and stretch it up a bit before you stitch this is to make sure that anytime the client wears it when you try to pull it or exert a little pressure in trying to stretch the fabric the seams do not break that is you don't end up tearing them and so this is what you do holding it with this hand and then supporting it with the one at the back I'll just stitch on we're just stitching the quarter of an inch. And 
So this means that we have sewn it like this. When we stretch it, we don't we wouldn't break the stitches. We wouldn't break the seams. But then if we had not pulled it as we were sewing, and then we just sewed it like this, anytime you stretch the fabric, it will break. Even with this very one, if you stretch it so much, it's going to tear the seams that you have sewn right here. And so this is what you do to it. Now we're going to repeat the same stitches on the other side of our skirt. So after stitching this and then running the overlock stitch on, the next step would be to fix our waistband. The waistband we need 2 inches and so we're going to multiply it by 2 to make it 4 inches and then our seam allowance of quarter inch and so the quarter plus quarter will give us half plus the 4 inches will give us 4 and half and so this means that we're going to cut a 4 inch width waistband and the length will be the length from this to that point and so we're getting 21 and half instead I'll do 21 and so we're going to cut a width of four and a half by 21 inches and so we're putting this on fold and then we're stitching this on and so now we're going to stitch the waistband so the next step is for the pleats and the hem of the skirt. I have cut 9 inches and the length is 66 inches. This is divided by 2, making it 33. Yes, and so what you're going to do is that we're going to open this up. We flip this good size together and then we'll stitch and turn it inside out. And so after we've gone to sew this and then turn it inside out as we said, we'll come and deal with the hem of the skirt. So this is the hem. We had added just one inch as hem allowance to it. And so we're going to run overlock stitches on the edge and then we'll fold that one inch on as we see here. And after we have done that, we will stitch. So our next step is to pleat this that we folded. Is to pleat this on the hem of the skirt. So the next step is to stitch and attach the pleat to our hemline. The next step would be to put the two together at the center back so that we would stitch from where we created the notch all the way to where we have pleated. And so we're going to fix our zip. There is this technique with fixing the zip that makes it stay without having bulges at the back of your skirt or your street dress or whatever you are sewing. That is what we are going to learn to do now. First, we would measure the distance to which we are going to fix the zipper. Okay, so when I measure this, I get nine and a half. This means that with the zip, we are going to take nine instead of the nine and a half we have here. So we're going to mark this as the beginning of our zipper and then we will measure the nine inches from this point downwards. Okay, I had already staged this thinking it was being recorded but I realized later that it wasn't recorded and so we're going to do the same thing as we've done here for 
the other side of the skirt. So we place the beginning of the zipper at the top here and then we'll pin it down. When it comes to the down part, we're also going to fix it at where we had created the notch initially. We would first stitch the end to secure it before we go and start from the other side all the way downwards. When you look at this, you see a lot of folds here, meaning the zipper is shorter than the fabric itself. This is because of the half inch difference we had. More so, the lycra stretches, but then the zipper doesn't. And so we're going to make sure we distribute the fold all along the zipper. We are not really sewing very close to the teeth. This is because we want to secure the zipper on the skirt first before we come and then sew a bit closer to the teeth to make it finish beautifully well. And so this is what we have. The space is just too big. We're going to sew closer to the teeth so as to make it finish beautifully well. And so because I want to sew very close to the teeth, I need to change my foot. This is a zipper foot, which will enable us to very close to the teeth. We'll go and iron this and then it would be okay but first we need to make sure we finish the edge very well this is what you're going to do we'll just flip this backwards like this and then we'll stitch on we flip it back to the good side like this and then we just do a little back and forth stitch here. This is neatly finished. We'll do the same for the other side of our skirt. Our skirt is ready. We'll take this to the dummy and then we'll try it on. This is our beautiful Victorian corset with skirt. Our model also rocked it perfectly well. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Keeps the comments coming. See you next time.